Hey guys, welcome to the 30 Paintings in 30 Days project. Right, if you so. choose to join me on the 30 Paintings in 30 Days journey, I hope that you do share and tag me in posts like on social media and stuff. Maybe film some videos, tag me in the description, something like that. Um, I am um, kind of excited about the project. I do do daily drawing. I don't necessarily do daily painting, but making a daily practice out of something like this encourages you to... Um, get better at it, um, encourages you to work it into your daily routine or weekly routine. Um, it also is a way to use up supplies. So if that's your goal, uh, maybe you don't want to do 30 paintings in 30 days, but you want to do 30 collages in 30 days. So that works too. So let me know. Let's get to painting and I'll see you at the Hey guys, here's painting number 30 of our 30 and 30 series as my inspiration photos fall over. <laughs> This is the last one in the series, and this is gonna be fun. So I don't know if y'all know this about me. If you're new to my channel, you don't, welcome. Um, I started out doing faces when I started my painting adventures with doing a lot of Buddha faces. And I still do quite a few of them, and we're gonna do one today. So I have some inspiration photos off that way. Um, and um, let's get started, shall we? I have one that's like gr shades of green. That would be a lot of fun. So let's start with that one. I'm gonna take this light green here in my schminky palette. It's called May Green. I'm gonna just go ahead and mix it over here on this dirty palette with this kind of orange, yellow, a little bit of pink that's on here. Grab some water. And we're gonna start by mapping out kind of where we want our face to be with this light green because as always you start out your paintings with the lighter color. When you're working with watercolor anyways, you should be starting out most of the time with the lighter colors and you work your way darker. That's generally how it goes. With acrylic or oils, of course, you can you know, layer whatever colors you want on top of each other because um, you can just cover up something that's been made too dark with something more opaque. But with watercolor, it's a little easier said than done. So you generally want to start with something already that's light and then work your way darker because uh, you can't really take it back. Um, I am going to go now with um, olive green. Why not? Let's start mapping out our shapes. We'll do the eyebrows first. I'll do the little mark in the head. The Buddha's eyes are generally closed, at least in the ones that I paint anyways. So we're gonna do the lips there and then we'll put a Shadow under the chin, um, shadow by the hairline. I am, again, I'm looking at photos. There you can find a lot of reference photos for this on the internet. Um, go to Pinterest or Google. You really just want to use the photo to tell you, help you where, and with shape and proportion to tell you where the light is, where um, the shadows are. You'll notice I'm using the, my favorite flat brush because, you know, why not? So just work your way darker and as you are, refine your shapes. Keeping in mind, we are mixed media artists and we have no problem with going in with a opaque um, color, an acrylic paint, a whiteout pen if we lose our highlights somewhere. We could totally do that. Okay, I'm gonna go in now with permanent green olive, which is a slightly darker color. And I probably should switch to a smaller brush about now. I don't know what that knocking is. I'm sorry for the noise. It's probably 
probably one of the neighbors. I have all the windows open. Generally, I live in a very quiet neighborhood and you can't really hear anything because the windows are usually closed. And there's usually nobody around, but it is Sunday afternoon. It's a bright, warm day. And there's lots of people out and children playing and it's all good. Okay, I am gonna switch to a smaller brush. I've got my number four round. I'm gonna start taking our colors and I'm gonna start doing this. So one of the ways you can refine the shape of the face if you've got, gotten it a little off is by making the um, background color around it darker and you can just pull the shape in of the face if it's too round or something. And the background on this um, inspiration photo is dark anyways. So I've painted this actually particular photo before um, a few times in uh, acrylic, generally in acrylic. I don't usually do it in watercolor, so that's a thing too. Okay. I'm going to go back to the olive green. Just for a little bit here, help us with some of our shapes. Kind of make the eye sockets look a little less flat. color in just a little bit. Again, we started out with that May green and now we're onto the olivey green and permanent green olive. It's olive green yellow and permanent green olive. And I'm switching back and forth between the two and using them to help me refine my shapes without making the face too dark. At least not yet. Not quite ready for that yet. I've done Buddha faces that are all purple. I've done Buddha faces that are all blue. I generally like to do them and like pick a color whatever color I'm feeling inspired to do at the moment. All right. We're gonna go with cobalt green dark, which is more of a blue green in my opinion. Put a little bit of that and then some water. I really dislike this paper. This, <laughs> this experiment is making me really realize I dislike this paper. I'm going to finish this journal and then it's going to go on the shelf and I'm not buying it again. Um, I do prefer, I've said this before in videos, I prefer um, the moleskin journal that we used for the first few video uh, paintings um, was a moleskin watercolor journal. That's a nice one. Um, I prefer Fabriano paper, um, Strathmore, Arches, Canson's nice. Whatever this is, I don't like it. I think it's from Hobby Lobby, but I don't remember. If you're going to just draw in it or do mixed media in it, you might have good luck, but I wouldn't watercolor in it. So now I'm using this darker green shade to help refine our colors. I mean, our shapes, you knew what I meant, right? I've only used greens, in case you haven't noticed. A 
only greens. So this is a fun way to experiment um, with just a particular color. And you know, if you really wanna challenge yourself, challenge yourself with a color that's in your palette that you dislike, that you don't gravitate towards. And challenge yourself to do a painting with just that color. You may learn, yep, still don't like that color. Not crazy about it. You might learn that, hey, you know what? That's not that bad. You may learn ways that you can incorporate it into your paintings. That's actually not bad on its own. I am going to add a little bit of phthalo green, which is a turquoisey blue green. We're gonna mix it with that dark green that we just used. I'm gonna add a little bit of this to our painting. We'll give it a little bit of pop without adding a completely different color. It'll, it's more on the blue side, but. And I'll just give it a pop here. Now, if you wanted to, of course, you could go back and add some white. My whites need more water. Okay, there we go. You could do it with white paint if you have one in your palette. You could do it with white gel pen. Whatever you have, use that. Look at your inspiration photo for where you should put those highlights. And just have fun with it. Painting should be a fun process. It should be an expressive process. It's not about doing everything perfect all the time, especially these little study paintings. They're just about learning your materials, learning your supplies, what you do like and what you don't like and playing with shapes and colors. I want you to have fun with it and I want you to enjoy it. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know. That's it, 30 and 30. Boy, oh boy, am I glad it's done. I hope you enjoyed the process. And um, if you want instruction on the painting, you need to be over on Patreon. They are gonna get the talking version here on YouTube. You're just gonna get the speed fruit through version, sorry. Um, if you'd like to support the free content here on Facebook or in the, uh, here on Facebook, holy cow. If you'd like to support the free content here on YouTube or over in the Facebook art groups, I certainly would appreciate that. You can of course join Patreon. We do have YouTube membership here for a, a small fee. And, um, also I have an Etsy shop and I have, um, PayPal tip jar and all that stuff. So check out the video description. Relevant links will also be down there. And, uh, yeah, don't forget the most important things. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay creative, and go out and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. Do share your work with me. I would love to see what you're doing. That's it for now. See you later. Bye, guys.